So we're here in Ada Street in the CBD with Jane Copeland. I hear you've got quite a few things going on in this street. Yeah, well there's a, an awful lot going, with, um, going on with gardening in the street because there quite a few residents are really interested in gardening and gardening organically and particularly gardening um, vegetables and fruit. So we start here at the, the top of the street and we have a, wow. a rocket and silver beet forest. And uh, what I really love about this one is that Anne, the owner, doesn't, um, she doesn't plant every season. She just lets them all go to seed and then they just um, regenerate every season. Incredible. So this whole spinach rocket forest has just come up from this, the seeds. What an absolute um, champion. Yeah, from the <laughs> last season's plants. And she's quite happy for us to uh, just go in there. And so I'm often going in here and just going, I need some salad. <laughs> here, I'll just go out and get some salad. And then what else have you got going on further down the street? Well, we really love fruit trees. So what we did was we planted some trees. The council, probably about 10 years ago, we had kind of wanted some fruit trees. We wanted some trees in the street. The council were a bit iffy about that. because Was, was there not much here at that point? There was or? just a little street gardens and they were sort of flat with just flowers and stuff. Right. But we wanted some trees and council weren't super supportive at that point but we just went ahead. Mm -hmm. um, Great job. <laughs> I'm basically I guess a gorilla gardener so in, that, in the sense that I if I see a piece of soil I just want to garden it and <laughs> yes. I don't care where it is and I love the fact that in the city you can actually do so much. Just find some soil anywhere just so that's kind of revolutionary though because a lot of people think in the cbd there's just concrete you can't grow yeah, anything here yeah. but that's not the case yeah not at all i just think just go for it just any bit of soil where <laughs> someone's not going to pull it up again and you do have those situations too sometimes mm. i mean you do you don't always get what you want but what we so we planted a couple of pear trees here in the street garden um, and for the first time, I've actually netted some of them because I really want some pears. And I pollinate it with a burbosk pear. So behind that big one, there's a burbosk pear uh -huh. to pollinate it. And we've got some burbosk pears on that. Right. So that's great. And so I'm going to get those pears and I'm going to distribute them down the street. Everyone's going to get one pear. Then we've got a lemon tree here that um, we planted about 10 years ago. And then these people have got a pomegranate. This is your place here, right? Yep. Yeah. So this is my house. Um, and so I've planted four apple trees here. And I've got a curry tree and a, oh, wow. a, an orange tree there. But the apples, the apples have gone incredibly well in Adelaide. I, I can't believe it. I, I thought it would be too hot yeah, right. or, you know, um, but it's, it's an amazing crop. They're, they're, I think they're pink ladies and they're red delicious. And then these people here, the neighbor, the guy who's owned this just said when he bought that house, what should I plant? And I said, I think you should plant five apple trees. <laughs> he went, okay, can you do it for me? I went, yes, <laughs> I certainly will. So I ran off to Bunnings before he could change his mind and I planted, um, these are red delicious and golden delicious. And he, he sort of made it to a beautiful hedge. Mm. Um, mine were a bit higgledy piggledy. Do you share the apples with the with the street? Yeah, so I've got a, a, a bowl on my veranda and people can just come and take apples oh, and wow. um, yeah, and then these guys went and um, with the Hutt Street Centre's down here too. I think they took some down to the Hutt Street Centre. And what have you got going on across the road here? Um, we've got a house here and the we've had continuously a vegetable garden here, a communal vegetable garden. Um, for about nine years. Wow. Um, because the owner doesn't really mind. We just seems to be happy for us to do that. And as, as there's no fence, it's got beautiful northern sun. Mm. But I'm going to pull this out very soon and start the winter crop. So silver beet and um, look, I, I'm actually into simple things. In terms of vegetable growing, I think my philosophy is do the simplest things that work. Mm. I'm, I'm not one of these people that tries to do really complicated things because I find that they just don't really work. If I was going to give a tip to anybody who doesn't know anything about gardening, just go for the most simple things. But the other thing is like silver beet rocket lettuce, just keep producing. Yes. So everyone can come and cut leaves off and it keeps going. It's uh -huh. not like, who took that eggplant? <laughs> There was only two eggplants and someone took one. That's actually a great tip for a community garden where people might come, yeah. cut and come again. You Exactly. Not, yeah. So how big is this space? Um, well, it's only, that's probably what less than a meter wide isn't it I, I think that's the other thing i'd say to people just if there's just any soil at all just plant don't worry like it doesn't have to be amazing you know it's that woman in the hills who wrote one square meter mm. uh, i can't remember her name but she wrote a book one square meter that you just don't need very much so i think people yeah you know, sometimes people get very discouraged and they think i can't do this it's too hard mm. but look I, i'm really not much of a gardener seriously i don't know an awful lot i just put 
the same things in every year because they work. <laughs> um, and you just don't need much space. Just plant wherever there's soil. Mm. I, I've even, I mean, you know, I dig up little bricks and things. Like these vines here, I just dug up some bricks and put the vines <laughs> on the stoby pole. If this street was wider, I would just chisel up bricks. And if I was like, if anyone is in a suburban street with a wider footpath, just think about things like that. Just chisel up a little square of brick Fantastic. and just put something in it. What has it done for your community to have these sort of shared spaces? This is a very tight knit little community. So I know every single person in the street. I've got all their phone numbers. I've been in every single house. <laughs> and we have, um, so we have street events. So every Wednesday we have coffee here at eight o'clock. So literally in the street here? Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just stand in the street. And um, on Sunday we're having a, a, a lunch so I've invited everyone in the street plus some people around the place. So about wow. 30 people. I've got some um, trestle tables from the community centre and we're just going to put the trestle tables in the street and have about 30 people having a lunch because it's Neighbours Day. It's officially Neighbours Day. What's going on with this corner garden here? Okay, so this was a pile of rubbish here, oh. which really got to me. Again, soil. <laughs> what can you do with it? So I just, for, for a couple of years, I just thought we've just got to do something with this. So, um, one day this woman here, mo there's some new people moved in here and uh, she was just standing in the street one day, I didn't know her, and she said to me, um, I'm just looking, there's someone here who does gardening. I said, that would be me. And it was a match made in heaven. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. And together we, so we became very good friends and we set up this garden here. Um, and so basically it, it's, um, there's a few apple trees at the back there mm -hmm. and then this is, I'm a bit of a salvia nut because <laughs> salvias are very hardy. Mm. They're very good for South Australian conditions. They attract a lot of bees. Yeah, there's bees all over yeah. it. Yeah, um, and so they pollinate the fruit trees. It's got this amazing lemon tree and they're very, very generous people and they just say, everybody take whatever lemons you like. So um, I just usually climb up on the garbage bin <laughs> there and um, take those lemons and they're, they're very happy for us to do that. And you've got some edibles along the front. And then we put a little, yeah, we put these little boxes in here. So this is our little winter crop of, again, spinach and rocket, <laughs> my favourites. Um, and then we, someone gave us that little bird bath, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm. I painted it and, oh, we painted the fence and put the wire up. And this guy here doesn't mind what we do. So we planted roses and just to make it look beautiful. Mm. And we've got a peach tree here. I don't know whether that's going to pollinate. It might be one of those ones that's like doesn't pollinate it. We'll just give it a couple of years and then we'll like, shop, out, boot. You've had your chance. So then we'll, yeah, so that, that, that'll be out. It doesn't produce a peach next season. Um, You're warned. I was hand watering it and Rose was watering it. I was just finding it a bit exhausting. Mm. Like it's just hard to water, hand water. So I contacted the council about three years ago and I just said, look, do you think we made this garden? Do you think you could irrigate it for us? And they were amazing. Oh, great. They were so amazing. They came down with a team of irrigation people <laughs> and they all sat around and they talked and they thought about different methods and they were going to just give me access to their own irrigation turn on, turn off. And then I said, no, no, we'll just dig up the street. <laughs> and they came here with this bobcat and they just dug a trench in the street to extend that irrigation system wow. there over to this garden. Isn't that great to see councils kind of getting behind exactly. street gardening, verge gardening, yeah. greening CBD exactly. areas, city areas? So the other thing I did, I wanted to produce a lot of compost because it's kind of expensive to enrich your soil all the time and people can't always afford to just go and buy a bag mm. of, you know, it's, it's really expensive. And yeah. so I thought, well, what, you know, let's just produce a lot of compost. So we've got two composting pickup points. Uh -huh. um, so people... Um, I just put food scraps there. There's one here and one in my garden, which I'll show you later. People just, I don't even know who uses this, but it's, you know, I have to empty it like it's almost full again. I just emptied it and I, I've got three compost heaps and I just turn it over really, really quickly, as quickly as I can, and then get that compost back out, out onto the street. So people drop their food scraps, you yep. take them home, I take them, them back there. to my place and I've got three heaps and I'm just trying to keep them moving over really quickly. I planted this nectarine tree here about five years ago and that is, that's an incredibly narrow verge that I it's know. on. I know. I'm so happy with that because I've got a, um, a guy who comes and prunes for me because I, I really like, I think, I don't know anything about pruning. Somehow I've never been able to kind of get it and I just want it to be done properly. Mm. So twice a year I get um, a guy to come and prune everything and he loves doing this one because he's sort of done it a spalliered without the st structure. 
He's a spalliate in the air, if you like. It's very beautiful. And every year when he's he's done it, he's look at this, look at this, <laughs> my God! And he takes a photo, and he's so happy. And um, it produced fantastic nectarines this year. Amazing, you know. So again, another tip for people: don't feel that you can't plant a fruit tree. Um, I mean, when we go into my garden, my own garden, you'll see there's a fig tree just against the fence. Wow. You know, um, and in fact, my fruit pruner said, just, just plant the fig tree against the fence. I said, you sure? Like, they're massive. And he said, no, no, it's fine. Just, we'll just train it along the fence. I went, okay. Um, <laughs> and he was right. Shall we go head up and have a yeah, look? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the little street bakery you've got here. Um, well, I've been baking bread for about six or seven years, I guess, sourdough bread. Mm. I got in before the lockdown, everyone. <laughs> I'm not one of these people that just started making sourdough during COVID. <laughs> anyway, for about seven years, and I just, I just so love it. Mm. So love it. And I used to take it to work and give it to people. And so then I just started selling it, um, you know, pre-orders and people, I'd just deliver it to people. And then I thought, oh, no, why don't we just set up a little shop? So um, I just built this little thing. In lockdown last year, I made this extremely bodgy, very bad <laughs> shop. But completely someone, adorable. <laughs> someone the other day said, oh, I was amazed at how you managed to get it in, you know, with cement and everything. And then I realized I was just held it on with an Oki strap. And I went, that's me, <laughs> Oki strap Jane. Wire an Oki strap and string. So basically, it's just an honesty system. So we have, um, I just put little, every day I put about 12 loaves out and some, um, about six baguettes. And I've just got prices on them. I don't explain too much. People just work it out. So um, they just um, work out that they should put some money there and they just write adorable little things like, I owe you $2. <laughs> I have paid back the 50 cents I owe you. <laughs> I'm in credit $17.50. It's just incredibly sweet mm. and it's an incredible um, way to strengthen a community because it's kind of extended beyond this street mm. because of course all these people either like the bread or they're not bread eaters, but then all these other people from around the streets like Gillis and Halifax and East Terrace and have started coming in here. Brilliant. It's incredible. Yeah. And this is your own backyard patch here? Yeah. Yeah, this is my little hippie yard. <laughs> um, it's very small, but again, I mean, I think you can just get a lot in. So in the, originally we actually had 14 fruit trees here. Wow. Yeah, it was like an orchard. <laughs> and I was really happy about that for a while, but then it just became very... It, you couldn't really do much else with it because mm. it was shady. It was very hard to net them all and mm. manage them all and prune them. And I couldn't really have any vegetables because it was just filled with trees. So we took the very hard decision to cut most of them down. Mm -hmm. And so now we've just got um, a lemon, a lime, a kumquat, a fig. Um, and then we espaliered that one. And that, if anyone's wondering about, you know, things like getting things into tight spaces, now that's a fig tree against a wall. And I never would have believed it could work, but mm. my tr pruning guy just said, yeah, just put it against the wall. And it's just incredible. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's worked so well. What I've done here is I've tried to put the sort of flowers in front, mm -hmm. apart from these tomatoes. Um, so the back um, rows, I've got vegetables. And the, those lovely yellow flowers, they're uh, Jerusalem artichokes. Um, under the ground mm -hmm. and then we've got pumpkin and capsicum and rocket and spinach and we've got a passion fruit vine um, some cucumber um, yeah and just the tomatoes wow. so not again it's it's modest it's not ambitious mm -hmm. it's just what I think works but it doesn't end here right you've got more through the gap um, we've got a back lane um, which I've try I'm trying to beautify mm -hmm. it's taking a long time I realized at some point uh, that we could use this space here because it was just a you know a lane filled with nothing just mm. sort of rubbishy and it's still a little bit um, you know marginal but I'm I had this idea of painting uh, panels so these are doors these are supposed to be doors we're painting little door handles on them and, <laughs> and knockers and letter boxes and that they're supposed to be framed with vines and then um, I just bought a little planter box and I put that here oh wow so I just put in, um, this is a summer crop, it's gone a bit crazy. <laughs> um, I did think they were cucumbers, but they seem also to be maybe pumpkins. So we'll just let that go. There's some capsicum in there and some silver beet. Um, and there's some mint here. Mm. And then again, my lovely salvias. Why is it important to you, this use of public space for gardening? I think, again, it's about um, giving people access to food. So anyone who walks down this garden can pick vegetables. Mm. I think it's a bringing together of people. It's creative. 
it's um, it's creating beauty in spaces that aren't particularly beautiful. And I mean, no one owns this lane. It wasn't really used at all. And I want it to be a space where people come down and maybe we have some parties here. I want to create happy places. I want to want people to feel happy in their in their environment, their mm -hmm. physical environment. So we've walked about what, a minute from your home. Yeah. And now you've got another garden on the street here, or um, friends do. Yeah. So these two beautiful young women live in this house here. And um, I met them through some community event and then we decided that we would set up a little verge garden here. So um, I just got the compost from the composting system in Ada Street and we brought it up here in a wheelbarrow and we just literally got out with mattocks <laughs> and we just started digging up the grass. Without asking anyone? Just gave no, it a go? No, we didn't ask anyone. Awesome. <laughs> and they, those women, Ruby and Beatrice, um, they just planted this beautiful garden. And we will keep going. I mean, we started with one strip and then a few months later we did another strip <laughs> and we sort of planned to keep moving along until... Um, and I think they contacted the council at one point and, and the council said, oh great, you know, you can have a grant if you Excellent. want to. It's just beautiful. Yeah. So I think the council is actually quite happy for people to do things like this. Yeah, it seems like there's a shift starting Definitely. in some councils at least. Definitely, I mm. think, yeah. Yeah. So it's incredibly encouraging and, and just lovely that people don't... People don't mind mm. you know no one i th think these neighbors were fine about it and, and i'm sure that we could do another strip and mm. people wouldn't mind well thanks so much for showing us around your part of the city jane it's actually so inspiring to see your gorilla approach you just get in there and do it approach um really mm. grateful for all the knowledge you've shared with us it's a pleasure <laughs> i'm just so happy that people are interested in it because you go where you know you do this stuff and you just you don't really sometimes you get some some feedback but people just you know, they see it and they like it, but they don't always say, well, mm. you know. So thank you so much for being interested in that. You're so welcome. I'm sure you've inspired a heap of people. So let's wait and see all the beautiful yeah, verges exactly, that come. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, that's great. I do hope it is inspiring, and particularly for people who feel they can't garden. Because seriously, I do not have very much gardening knowledge. Mm. You know, lots of things don't work. And so I just encourage people just dig and put in something easy.